Oh, Lord, we thank you that you are with us just as you always are. We look forward to hearing from your word. We trust that your Holy Spirit is already at work in our hearts as we've worshipped you. And now we just pray that you will open our hearts and minds to everything that you say to us. That we might be changed by you into the people you have created us to be. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's hear the word of God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. He goes on to say, Then he will say to those at his left hand, the goats, you that are accursed, depart from me and into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. My goodness, my goodness. It's a serious word, isn't it? A serious word. It's called the the judgment of the nations. Oh, the judgment of the nations. We don't like that word judgment, do we? We Methodists don't like that word. I don't like that word either. I looked in the Greek to see if we could make some change, you know, and give a softer word or find a, a softer translation than judgment. But I couldn't find anything. I tried to mark it out with my pen, and, well, you can see it still right through there. Judgment. I thought we could just skip over it, but... That doesn't seem right either. When you start skipping over stuff, where do you stop? You know, you, it's a slippery slope. We'll just have to keep it, I guess, the judgment, the judgment of the nations. But if you look at it as a parable, maybe as an expansion of the greatest commandment. You know the greatest commandment, don't you? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor As you love yourself, yeah, that one, that greatest commandment. If we look at it as an expansion of the greatest commandment, maybe we can make some better sense of it. Maybe it can become a kind of of an instruction sheet for how we ought to live, you know, to give us a list. It gives us a list of, of six big things that we need to do, doesn't it? Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger in, visit those in prison, and care for the sick. Now, there we go. There are six things, six instructions for living. Maybe we could just take this as kind of an instruction sheet and be doing those things. Be doing those things. And remember, be looking for Jesus all that whole time because he promises he's right there with them. He'll be there somewhere. Maybe we could do it that way. We won't have to talk about judgment then. But that's not Jesus' point, is it? That's not his point. The sheep didn't even know that they had done anything. Okay? And if you keep reading, the goats didn't even know they had not done anything. They had no clue. Both of them were confused. They, They didn't understand. They were surprised to discover that in doing, they had been with Jesus. 
and in not doing, they had missed Jesus somehow. If we listen to the goats, it is as if we hear them say, Oh my goodness, Jesus, if only we had known it was you. If we had just known it was you, Jesus, we would have really put on the dog. Oh my goodness. We would have had coffee and dessert and some ice cream. We would have had a big time together if you had just let us know that you were here. We hear the sheep say, Oh, oh my goodness, we're sorry we missed you, Jesus. We're sorry we didn't notice you there. We were so busy working, I guess you just slipped right by us. We would have at least stopped and waved and shook your hand. But we missed you. We missed you somehow. You see, the, the point that Jesus is making has to do with the hearts of the sheep and the goats. The sheep genuinely, truly were moved by love for their neighbor. They were moved by that love, moved enough to do something, to love them, to serve them, to welcome them into life together with them. The sheep were moved by their heart. And the goats, well, the goats, while they might have, they might have looked sadly in the direction of the least of these, they might have felt at least a twinge of compassion for the least of these. They looked over there and saw them, you know, and felt something, at least a little twinge of compassion, but, but not enough, not enough to move them, to move them from their comfortable church pews, from their Sunday school classes, from their Bible study, from their recliner at home, out into a world full of hurting struggling people whom Jesus calls our neighbors, our neighbors. Sometimes a twinge of compassion isn't enough, is it? It's not enough. There must be love. There must be hope that dreams something better for those who hurt around us there must be action rooted in that compassion and love and hope action the judgment the judgment here is severe either you genuinely loved people enough to enter into life with them to experience hope together with them and thus you are blessed, or you didn't, <laughs> or you didn't, and thus you are cursed by this unending separation from God, from God who made you. My goodness, we don't like, we don't like this black and white business, do we? It's a little too stark. Ed, can you get us some gray could you bring us some gray? We need a little gray area here, Ed. Have you got some in your pocket? We need Only on your head. We need more than that. We need some gray. We need a loophole, don't we? We need some way to slip around or through this. We need something here to let us fudge just a, a, little, a little bit. We need an out or else we're going to wind up in the goat pen. Nobody wants to be in the goat. Who wants to be a goat? Have you seen a goat? You don't want to be a goat. We're going to wind up in the goat pen, none of us is going to get this right every time, are we? It's impossible, Jesus. It is impossible for us. The truth is, this isn't about that either. It's not about getting it right every time. It is instead about our hearts about our hearts how are they growing are they becoming more tender are they becoming more fully aware of what is going on around us are they becoming more full of love and hope are they driving us to love in action or are they generally complacent 
hard-boiled, closed off. You see, the heart of a disciple, the heart transformed by Jesus, while not yet perfect, <laughs> is always being made complete in love. It is always bending toward the heart of Jesus, which is a heart marked forever by the tattoo of God's grace in the shape of a cross, bringing love to the world. It is a heart that is open, that is tender, that is full of love and hope. It is a heart that is deeply aware of the hurting around us. It is a heart that is driven to action, to love in action, that seeks the well-being of all people. That's what all this is about. That's what it's all about. We have with us today our brother Tristan sitting with me up here. Uh, Tristan was baptized about a few months ago. He went through the uh, summertime confirmation crash course. That was a wild experience. And at the end of that, he said, I'm ready to be baptized. I think he was already ready to be baptized before we ever got there. And he knelt right here, and we baptized him. And uh, Tristan shared a story with our youth group some weeks ago, and it, it got around to me, and then he shared it with me. And I was deeply moved by it, so I want you to hear it too. Tristan's story has reminded me of why we're here and of what it is that God expects of each of us and why it's so important that we pay close and careful attention to those around us. Tristan, would you share with us? Hello. <clears throat> uh, if you want to, if you want a verse that I'm going to base this off and or want to turn your Bibles to Psalms 86, 13, uh, it goes like this. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. It, this Bible verse, it's always a great reminder to me was what happened to me one day. So, all right, let's look at this. We know that God's love is endless and amazing, but in this case, it's called great. Now, why is that? Let's keep this on our mind as I talk. So, in some Bibles, grave is translated into sheol or hell. So, it's speaking of a bad place that this person got saved out of. So now, I didn't just come up here to talk about this Bible verse. I also came up here to talk about myself. Before I started coming back to church, I went, I suffered from depression and had suicidal thoughts every day. I would, I never saw the light of the day I never saw anything good ever. I I would act like I did. I would cover it up with a smile and say, I'm having a great time or I'm fine. But truthfully, I deep down I no, I didn't feel any of that. I felt lonely. I felt sad. I was on the brink of the point that I was didn't want to live anymore. I didn't my will of to live vanished. I gave up hope. One day I used to, I almost threw myself into oncoming traffic as I walked home. But I didn't. I, I don't know. I was too scared to. I, I just couldn't do it. I thank God every day that I didn't do it. So one day after school, I got the most, I got something I would have never expected to happen in my life. I was asked a question by a person that I really didn't even think would care to ask me. 
she asked me, would you like to go to church with me? I was shocked at this question. I had not been thinking about this ever since, I don't know, like third grade in school. And I had become an atheist at that point, and I, I was blown away at the question. But I thought about it, and I really didn't have anything else going for me, so I said yes. I, later that day, I, th- I really thought I was stupid for saying yes. <laughs> but now I think about it, and I think, no, no, I wasn't stupid or an idiot for saying yes. That, that question saved my life. Now, whenever I, whenever I first came, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I was expected to be criticized, uh, just plain out told everything I did I need to, was wrong. I needed to change my ways. I needed to change how I lived. Now, that didn't happen at all. No, 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 no. I was, I was welcomed and treated like, like I was family. Like I had always been a part of that. The youth group. Scott, Jill, Doug, them, the youth group, they they, they helped me so much. I, I just can't begin to describe how much they helped me. And I look at them every day, and I just think, what kind of, what kind of people, what kind of amazing people would change, the, ugh, not that, would speak to someone like me and think that I could be the next person to be in church. And over time, I got out of my depression. I I stopped thinking about all this. It's almost, it's almost been a year now, and I'm so happy that I didn't kill myself that day. You see, whenever you have depression, you... You don't see the light of day. You don't see anything good. You only see the bad and the darkness. I honestly think that with it, with anyone that is lost or needing some way to find how we live, or just to get back into what something that they've lost, that we could bring them here and show them how we work and how God's love affects everyone. That's how his love is great. There it is again. Great. Right? His love is great all the time. We don't we may not realize it. There's pain everywhere in this world, but God's love helps us get through it every day. Now, as after the first service, I this woman came up to me and she came up to me and explained that she had lost her daughter to suicide. And I think about that now. And I realize that this world, it can be cruel sometimes. It can push you to your knees and to the breaking point that you think you have nothing left to live for and that you take your life. And... I wish that we could live in a world that doesn't do that, but we don't get that choice. And I really wish that depression and suicidal thoughts weren't a thing, because <laughs> this world would be so much brighter if we didn't have those things. But that's just part of it. It's how people affect us. I I just wish that, I hope that everyone will realize that even the simplest question, like, would you like to go to church with me? Or handing them the simple cards that we give out, those little things can change whole lives to the point like me. They made me feel, they made me go from someone that didn't even think they were human at a point to someone that is joyful, playful, and thanking God each day that they're alive. And I, I'm i so happy that we're in the theme of 
inviting people because we can change people like me or used to me like me and make them human again. We are thankful to God for Tristan and for your great courage in telling your story. We need to hear your story. We forget, we forget, don't we, of the power of a simple act of invitation, of a hug, of a caring word. It changes lives. I heard someone say, you're going to change lives, and I want to say, you already are, brother. You are. And we're thankful for you again. Thank you, Tristan. Hearts full of love in action that seeks the well-being of all people. That is what God gives to us in Jesus. That's what God gives us. Will you receive that gift? Have you already receive that gift and will you receive also the great responsibilities that come with it I know that you will for you already have I see it among you every single day and I thank God for it so brothers and sisters let's carry on Let's carry on with this good work. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the people of God say, Amen.